22 nanometer. Oh. Fully functional. 22 nanometer phones provide 50% performance gain with even longer battery life. But wait, we've also got LTE. One of the things that's been holding Intel back from this portion of the industry has been our lack of LTE. This phone is working on LTE right now with Intel Silicon. We are shipping data LTE today with Voice 3G. By the end of the year, for products next year, we'll be shipping true data LTE and voice LTE in our phones. We are here. But in a market like that, simply providing great silicon and getting into the LTE devices isn't enough. You have to keep innovating. So, let's talk about LTE Advanced. Consumers want data. What they want is faster data. They want to be able to get data to their devices at a much, much faster rate. What I'm showing you here is on the right-hand side is the data rate to that phone. It's running about 35 megabits per second. Our team in San Diego has been working on carrier aggregation. And in just a couple seconds, you'll see this actual device turn on carrier activation and shift from 35 megabits per second to approximately 70 megabits per second. We know that we can continue this and get upwards of over 150 megabits per second. Hopefully, it'll switch here pretty soon. <laughs> Your demos never work just the way you want them to. Time always takes a little bit longer. Let's see if it shifts. <laughs> Something shifted. Uh, hopefully, they're going to get that back up. If I can get through this, I'll see if I can come back to that one. Oh, there it is. So, this is 35 to 70 megabits per second. As I said, our plans is before we bring this to production to get upwards of 150 megabits per second and above. Um, this should ship in uh, 2014 as well. So, from a phone perspective, 22 nanometer leading silicon, LTE here already on data with 3G voice, here at the end of the year with LTE data and voice, and as I said, carrier aggregation next year, and it truly does work. So those are the areas that we kind of know today. Phones, tablets, PCs. I want to take a little bit of time now to talk about how we're going to extend this how we're going to look at areas well beyond where the industry is thinking today. So I want to talk a little bit about the Internet of Things. You hear a lot about that. You hear words mixed up sometimes. Internet of Things, wearables, all kinds of devices. We think of these things as actually very similar. Whether you're connecting to a human on a real-time basis or connecting to a machine on a real-time basis, there's certain things that the device needs. It needs very low power. We're talking about power levels that are well below the devices we've talked about so far. You want this small light in your hands, on your body, and working all day. You don't want to have to stop halfway through your day with your watch or whatever it is and, and say, I've got to recharge. Right? It needs to be connected because there's really no value unless this thing is connected. It has to be a very small form factor. It has to fit on our body. And more importantly, think about this. We all talk about the amount of data we're transferring over this uh, internet today and the security of it. But imagine when these devices are with us 24-7. The amount of data and information and personal content that will be exchanged. Security becomes even more important. So I have an announcement today 
that I didn't read in any of the pre-press. So we were able to keep it quiet. We're announcing today the Quark family of silica, Intel's smallest SOC ever. This part is one-fifth, roughly, the size of our atom microprocessor and approximately one-tenth the power. It is fully synthesizable with an open architecture and open ecosystem. It is designed for the Internet of Things. This is just an example of the silicon innovation that's going on inside of Intel. But again, that's not enough. Because if you're really going to do this, you have to understand the devices that you're going into. So Intel has already been starting work on reference designs. We have reference designs for industrial Internet of Things. These are boards designed to be on the edges of the network, out on the extreme environments, to connect machines back to the internet. These are reference designs ready to go to our developer community and actually out into industry already. They'll come with software, they will come with that open architecture and that open ecosystem. Because this device is fully synthesizable, if companies have their own intellectual property they'd like to put into the silicon, we can support that. This is truly designed for this open environment. But that's not enough. Because I said this is not only about industrial, I said it's about wearables. It's about people. And so yes, we have been working on wearables. No questions. We have wearables. These are reference designs. This one's a little bit more, uh, I'll call it, uh, lab oriented, um, but we've looked at form factors actually. This is a form factor we've been playing with. The idea is not necessarily for Intel to bring these to market, but to come up with devices that partners could use to develop their own products in this open ecosystem. They can again write their own software, develop their own applications, and drive this product into the market themselves. But what we needed to do was build things so we really knew what did the customer need, what do the developers need, and so that we could bring these products to market with applications all ready to go. And you can only do that if you have the reference designs. Okay. So what does this mean for the future. 